Lanson Podcast. Well, this is, I just dropped into British Wall in the Pelican and Justice Estate. They come in the corners of Lanson. But yes, years ago, we had one actually uh, wall place that uh, farmers came in, brought all the wool in by lies to a place actually in a certain way. You know, now it's restarted again. I believe you had one, they had one in this card as well, and they've come over the corner of Cheval Anson on the industrial estate. I'm actually in the complex now, head around with a lot of wool. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, very good. Thank you. What's your name? It's Rob. Rob Trevitt. You actually, they had one years ago, like I said, actually in Erden Way in Lansing, didn't they? Yes, that's, that's right, yes. Uh, actually, it was, uh, my brother-in-law was a manager over then, um, a man called Phil Toms, and uh, he actually worked for British Wool for uh, 50 years, and uh, until he retired, and uh, so all his life uh, handling wool. It was, that did have a, a different name, didn't it? Yes, it was. Um, it's all part of the same organisation. Uh, we were like Wool Growers UK, but um, the local name, if you like, was, was Devon and Cornwall Wools. And um, they had um, a, a depot in South Moulton, uh, I believe one in North Tamerton, one at Buckfast Lee, uh, one at Launceston and one down at Liscard. I believe over the years actually, I mean you used to have one in Liscard as well, in Liscard, in Liscard. Um, what sort of made you come over to Corner to have I know there's a lot of farmers on Foyne Moor, Bombing Moor and surrounding areas. Is that the idea of coming to the Corner's now? Excess? Well, uh, Yes, part, that's probably the main reason why we've come to Launceston is because um, we're the best best position. Uh, we're surrounded by um, sheep breeders. Um, if, you, if you looked at all the registered breeders that uh, we have at British Wool and put a, a pin on a map, you would see Launceston is, is pretty well right in the middle of it. Um, but the main reason we've now um, sort of relocated is, is to Launceston is because, um, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the price of wool crashed. It kicked off uh, probably 2019 um, in December time when the, the outbreak pandemic started in China. China is actually quite a large buyer of British wool. Yeah. And um, the, the pandemic over there started hitting uh, our auctions where uh, the, 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 the demand was dropping. Then of course it spread to Europe and so on. Um, so from December 2019, January, February, March, April, our auctions, which we hold 20 a year, um, basically nosedived. Uh, it meant that uh, come the end of April, which is the end of like our selling year uh, for wool, we had uh, a very large overstock of wool that we weren't able to sell. Uh, that had to be carried over into last year. Um, so basically what it meant, we've got uh, a lot more wool than we would usually have in a selling year uh, and in a market that demand was very, very low. So unfortunately, uh, the price fell through the floor. Very difficult year, very difficult year for, for, for everybody, um, also British wool. Unfortunately, we, uh, we didn't get any help. Uh, there was no subsidies, no help from the government. So we were forced uh, into a cost cutting uh, regime and uh, four depots had to be closed throughout the country and British Wool at Liscard was one of them. We've relocated here um, at Launceston so that, that basically um, if, you're, if you're a farmer in the southwest or any, but basically in the UK you are no more than 45 minutes away from any drop-off depot for British Wool. Um, so as I say we, we relocated from Liscard to Launceston. We used to grow, all the wool used to get graded in, in Liscard. Uh, we would take the wool in for all the surrounding farmers, for all of Cornwall and pretty well half of Devon um, all that wool used to go into Liscard. It was all um, processed fleece by fleece, graded into all the different grades um, and, and checked, for, checked for quality, for fineness, um, uh, for colour, um, for moisture content. Um, uh, basically, that was all done the Liscard, uh, but unfortunately, as I say, that, that's, we've had to close that and instead we've opened up a depot here in Launceston, which is it's, it's, it's basically a holding depot for it's the world. good wall. actually, because it's straight off the A30 actually, you've got access off the South Pennon Road coming in and you've got also access off, off Waymore, Bombing Moor Road, Bombing Road into Launceston, into Pelly Gillam, and it's uh, access for lorries as well. Yeah, no, oh, it, it couldn't be better. We, we couldn't be in a better spot. Certainly on Penny, uh, in Penny Gillum Industrial Estate here, a lot of farmers actually come in here for other, other, uh, other reasons. You know, you've got the vets, we've got the Hamleys. Um, so, and as you say, uh, access is brilliant, easy to get wool in, easy to get wool out. Wool's more important now, isn't it? It's still important, uh, merely, isn't it? 
floor well, is. Yes, it is. Uh, it is. Um, it, it's a shame that the price is so low at the moment when, when you see uh, wool from environmental reasons is such a sustainable product. Um, and I, I think certainly over the next few years when um, we, we're trying to move away from perhaps these, these synthetics, these oil-based products yeah, and so on, yeah. that I think the, the, the value and the use of wool will, will increase. Um, the majority of, of well, the, let me say over 50% of the wool, British wool, actually goes into carpets um, because it's so hard oh, wearing. Any carpet, do you think? Yeah, yeah, it goes into knitwear and upholstery um, and clothing. Um, it uh, is it's using a whole manner of things. There's, there's things that uh, we're sort of exploring, no new avenues, um, like tree protectors. Um, you know, because uh, at the moment they use the plastic ones, and because as we know, there's, there's thousands, millions in, of trees getting out planted. When you're in the complex here, actually, you've got, uh, you've got four trucks and that to, to lift it. Um, how easy it is it to lift it? How easy it is to stack it up? And do you actually wash it now? No, we don't wash it here. No, we just uh, we take the, the raw greasy fleece from the farmers. They deliver it in on their tractors, trailers, cars, horse boxes, whatever. It's a good old manual sack truck. So we, we, we stand them up on end, put it on the sack truck, we weigh them. So that basically the farmer gets a, a gross weight for every sheet. We call them sheets. That's what the fleeces are packed yeah. into, into the bags, sheets. And um, once we weigh them off, we put them into a compactor, which squeezes all the air out of the, yeah, the fleeces, yeah. really. Um, and it squeezes them up to about a third of the size. Uh, the idea for that is, is that we can maximise the amount we can get on an Arctic lorry and it keeps transport costs to, to a minimum. Then get on an Arctic lorry, we can get about 14. So that's about uh, 280, nearly 300 sheets per load and that goes up to South Moulton for grading. We have one in this morning that, uh, that's gone out, so we usually have one or two a week um, that, that feeds them up there. So all the grading is done there. Yeah, it's all gets sold at auction, um, but it has to be graded first. It has to be graded by types, all the your fines, your mediums, your heavies. And as I say earlier, about you're, you're looking for your colour and, and the fineness and so on. So it's all, se all separated in, into separate grades. Uh, there's probably about you know, 40, 50 different grades. Um, we sell them in eight tonne um, lots at an open auction in Bradford. Because British Wool, just a little bit of background, we are a, a, a non-profit making organisation. We're owned by the farmers essentially. Um, the farmers bring the wool in today. Um, they leave us their wool. We sell their wool on their behalf. At, and yeah, try and, they get paid. And well basically it's sold in an auction at, at a true open market value. Okay. And because we have uh, 20 sales a year roughly, and that runs from May to April, and uh, at the end of the year, we know then how much we fetch yeah, for the wool yeah, that we've sold. Yeah. We then pay the farmers the following year for the wool that they received the year before. So but as I say, we're non-profit making. So when we've seen the revenue, obviously, that you've obtained from the wool, we, ob we have to take our running costs out, obviously. So are you paying, you're paying, you're paying arrears on, do you? you? You do. The reason for that is because, as I say, we're non-profit making, we don't, have, we don't hold reserves. Um, there's, there's no shepherds of money in the bank. Um, so we're not able to sell the wool un until it's sold. What made you actually go in this wool industry? Actually, you must have got an idea in wool. Um, yeah, it's well, I, going to, really. well, it's like a lot of things, really. I think um, perhaps just a bit of luck. I think I, I was in the newspaper industry for over 30 years. Uh, actually worked in Plymouth uh, at Derriford yeah. um, with the West Warren News uh, oh, yeah. and so on. And um, well, the press is closed in 2010. So I found myself uh, redundant. But as I mentioned earlier on, my brother-in-law was a manager with British Wool here at Launceston. Then he was a manager at Liscard. And, and lucky enough, he said, well, there's a job down here if you want it. So um, I thought, great. That's, yep. Yeah. So um, I was pleased to work alongside him. and very much enjoyed that. Um, but I've also, uh, when, I was, when I was a youngster, I think at the age of 10, I worked for a, a local farmer um, in Pensilva. Yeah. On, Bob, on the edge of Bobman Moor there. And I worked down there every Saturday, all school holidays, till I left school and got into the newspaper trade. So when it comes to farming, I've pretty well experienced 
everything there is to experience so in lots of ways it's like full circle coming back and it, it's very enjoyable in terms of this job it, it's meeting the farmers and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk with them every day you know every day when they come in with the wool and uh, see how, how the life's treating them really are you going to have actually auction, um, auctioneers here actually or auctioneer or are you going to have people sheep shearing here actually or competitions uh no i don't think there's any plans for that um we have we do have a marketing team um that that handle that side of thing i i i'll be honest i don't know what their their plans are this year but um usually we help organize um shearing competitions that kind of thing at the local shows royal cornwall devon county that kind of thing but um obviously that's all a bit up in the air at the moment is there a contact? Is there somebody interested in bringing all the farmers to get this to the programme? Are you, is anybody interested actually? Maybe out there morning will be good wool, know where they're going to bring the wool to now. Um, how can they contact you and how can they get on email or, 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 or online? Yeah. Well, well, British Wool has got a, got a website with a heck of a lot of information on there telling them all about the organisation, all, all the depots, all our infrastructure. tells them also about um, what we're trying to do to promote wool and add value to the wool. So certainly, um, I would say that would be one of your first points of call. But um, um, we, we can be contacted here at Launceston. Um, we, we kept uh, our same number from Listgard. So we, 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 although we've moved, we, we made a decision to keep the local number. So it is an 01579 start number because that's what most of the farmers who've been coming to us for years know what to ring. Yeah. Um, so we can be contacted on 01579 342 422 and yeah we're here on Penny Gillam Head at Launceston and we'll be pleased to receive you all and uh, see you. Are you on, e are you on, e on email? Yes, um, again all the, all the details will be on, on the British World website but my email address is my name and it's Robert Trivet. that's spelled T-R-I-V-E-T-T, -T. that's at BritishWool.org.uk. It's interesting as you stand here actually and watching all the piles up and they're ready to go off to auction. So all this stuff now is ready to go off to auction, is it? No, all the all the compacted bales, that's what we call them there, um, is ready. That's ready to go on Arctic Lorry to South Moulton for grading. So this is just one part. This is the collection process, if you like, here. But actually nothing has been done yet to, to sort it. So all these, all these sheets you can see stacked up there. We'll go on Arctic, up to South Moulton, be unloaded, put behind a grading table. And each individual sheet will then be opened up so the fleeces then drop onto a grading table and as a graders there um, who have, have completed an apprenticeship which is a minimum of five years it takes a long time to to build up the knowledge of wool because a lot of it is by touch and feel and, and know-how um, and the technical guys up there will go for every single fleece and um, and put it into uh, the relevant skip the great grade skip and um, when there's usually uh, eight to ten skipfuls of wool they're then put into a, a baler um, there's a machine that, that with a lift and it lifts the the skips up tips the tips the skip into the top of the baler where it's where it's then compressed compressed into into blocks usually around about 400 kilos per bale yeah and um, we then put them into Round about 22, 23 bale lots, um, which is near near enough for eight ton, and they're told, then sold in eight ton lots at an online auction in Bradford. A lot of people don't realise you know, how hard it is actually from the start to the beginning before they wear a jumper. No, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, this is just quite weird. Just at the very start of the process. Um, from the sheep shearing to the sheep to the sheep shearing. To, the, to yourselves, and to your stocking, and transfer it up to auction, and then before they actually buy it, and then they go on to the actual um, wool to knit, knit to make your jumpers. That's right, yeah, well, crikey. There's a lot to it, there's an awful lot to it. See, we, as far as British wool goes, we just sell greasy wool. So when we, at the auction, in our sort of eight ton lots, that's the end of our process then. The buyers then, then they've got to process it, um, but um, there are two what they call scouring plants, washing plants um, in the UK, and they're both up in Bradford. And basically, um, they're huge, great plants, use, use a awful lot of energy, obviously, uh, to be washed. And they wash 50 tonne lots at a time. Which so is mainly, we're going, we're, going very advanced, we're, going, we're going to advance now, because going back many years ago, right back to the period of the Saxons, time when they were still doing it back then and the Viking period back then they were still doing wool. 
That's right. Oh, yeah, nothing's, so nothing's really changed. Died out. It just shows you what, no, but it's such a, uh, an environmental and sustainable product. That's the thing. And uh, being sustainable, uh, you know, you, you, every year you've got a supply of wool coming through. So, um, yeah, it certainly stood the taste of time, that's for certain. Well, thank you for talking to me, actually. I know there's somebody maybe coming in over an hour to actually to get on the foot of truck lock and do delivery wool. All right. Yeah. Well, we uh, we have appointments throughout the day um, with the farmers. Keep keep dropping in wool. Keep keep us keep us going during the day. And um, we try to um, we make appointments, but we we try to accommodate the farmers when convenient with them to bring in their wool. But it's a it's a it's a steady stream all day long, and uh, just as much as we can handle to make sure that we can process it and handle it, compact it uh, each day before another new lot comes in tomorrow. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank, thank you. you. We're in a North Cornish town With programmes just for you The Lanson Podcast